Holy One, may thy word only be spoken and thy word only be heard. Amen. Please be seated. In between all the games that have been going on this weekend, I wonder if any of you, like me, have been watching Pope Francis glued, in fact, to the TV. This extraordinary opportunity for a man, a Christian man, to address world leaders and politicians and so many children and women and men, some who waited patiently for hours to catch a glimpse of him, to hear him speak, and perhaps even to be blessed by him. And I wonder if you marveled at the unprecedented security measures taken to protect him, more even, it was said, by one than our own president. And I wonder, too, what struck you as you watched. What did you see and hear? Several images come to my mind, one of the Holy Father stopping the heavily secured convey on their way back or forth from the airport to step out of his fiat and kiss a severely disabled child who was on the side of the road with his family. Another of his waving the security guards to bring a small baby to him. And passages of scripture came to my mind. Let the little children come to me and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. And if I could but just touch his garment, I would be healed. Now, of course, Pope Francis is not our Lord and Savior. Neither the security detail his disciples, though in a moment of fancy, I found myself imagining if the way that the disciples would worry about what is Jesus going to do next could be similar, perhaps, to how some of the security might view a sudden and unscheduled stop on the side of a highway so that the Pope could bless a child. The Pope is not God, but he is made in the image of God and carries the power of the Holy Spirit within him. Dear friends, you and I and all people are made in the image of God. And when we accept Christ in our lives, we carry the power of the Holy Spirit within us. Jesus told his disciples as he prepared to leave them that when he ascended, they would not be alone. They would not be orphaned. The Holy Spirit whom the Father will send in my name will teach you everything and remind you of all that I've said to you. And very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do. In fact, will do greater works than these. In the reading from St. James that we heard, St. James writes of the prayer of the righteous as powerful and effective. And he adds that Elijah, the prophet who prayed for rain and prayed for rain to stop, was a human being just like us. Pope Francis is a human being like us. And even our Lord Jesus Christ came to walk on this earth as a human being that we might encounter God, albeit a human without sin, being also the God who created us and loved us and urges us to pray in his name. Seven times prayer is mentioned in that brief passage from James. Prayer for the sick, prayer for the suffering, prayer to be forgiven in community with our sisters and brothers. One of the images that stays with me from these last few days is that of thousands of people in joyful community, all races and all ages, all conditions, receiving the body of Christ, celebrating the freedom that we've been given, the joy that surely flows from knowing that we are loved. Are any cheerful? They should sing songs of praise, said St. James. But dear friends, not all Christians are free to show their faith and their joy so openly. A few days ago, I attended with my husband a conference on religious freedom. 
And it was a sobering reminder that as we celebrate our faith in the land of the free, so many are prevented from doing so in other parts of the world. We were told that 75% of people live in countries where religion is highly or very highly restricted. 75%. Now this is not limited to Christians, of course. Violent religious persecutions are destroying communities of Christians and Muslims and other religions. And an example was given of the butchery of the Rohingya Muslims in uh, Burma. There are countless examples of people suffering as a result of their religious faith. And people fleeing from their countries, seeking a better life. The heartbreaking photos that we saw a couple of weeks ago of a child lying dead on a beach has spurred many people into action. Thousands of refugees from Syria, but also from Eritrea and Nigeria and Afghan and Pakistan seeking refuge in Europe. But sadly, our sisters and brothers in Christ in the Middle East are largely ignored. 100 years ago, 1.5 Christian Armenians were murdered during the Ottoman Empire, and Pope Francis called it genocide. And he used the same word for what is happening in Iraq. Christian families have been driven from their homes, ancient peoples who still speak the Aramaic language of our Lord. They are being slaughtered. They will likely never return to their land. They fled with nothing, not even the, the amount required to pay traffickers to bring them to Europe. Many have fled to the tiny country of Jordan where they live in makeshift spaces and sometimes in dreadful conditions in camps. They cannot work and their children can't attend school. Some churches have offered their sanctuaries and if down the hallway and on the right there you'll see on the bulletin board a couple of pictures of a Catholic church that has made the sanctuary into little some rooms just partitioned off for, for families to be in one little room. Canon Andrew White, who I've mentioned before, is working hard to provide schools for some of the children. And many of them can't even go to UN camps because, like the Yazidis and other religious minorities, they are targeted even within the camps. At this conference, there was a dignified list of speakers, and regardless of where you are on the right and left in the political forum, one of the very passionate speakers is uh, retired Senator Frank Wolf, now chair of religion at Baylor University. He has spoken tirelessly about religious freedom and has been to many of the places um, of conflict, so he knows of what he speaks. And he said to us, we need to hear the voice of the church. We need to hear the voice of the church. Archbishop of Baltimore said, religious freedom will only matter if religion matters, if we believe that God is great, that God is worthy to be praised. And also, human nature has dignity by the very fact that we are made in the image of God. Each person matters because we are made in the image of God. Pope Francis spoke about that dignity. He spoke about seeing people as individuals, about listening to their stories, because we are made in God's image. Christians are being massacred and crucified and children brutally and mercilessly killed, young women enslaved and raped, and we are horrified rightfully. But too often, the church in the Western world stays silent. Martin Luther King famously wrote, in the end, we will remember not the words of our enemies, but the silence of our friends. And recall in Exodus, then the Lord said to Moses, go to Pharaoh and say to him, this is what the Lord, the God of Hebrews says, let my people go so that they may worship me. Moses was very reluctant to speak. It's hard sometimes to know what to do. But Frank Wolf reminded us that unless people speak out to our leaders, to our government, they are not going to respond. 
And so now is the time for us to speak out. Now is the time for us to pray and to pray and to pray. The prayer in particular was stressed by two Syrian refugees who were at that conference. They spoke of the evil being done in the name of religion. And sadly, we know that evil has been done in the name of all religions, including, sadly, Christianity. But it doesn't negate what we are called to do now. Those refugees had to have their identities hidden. And they spoke of sending their children to school one morning and then hearing mortars raining down on the place where the children were. Their children were not killed, but many were. They spoke of friends who were still in Iraq buying poison so that if ISIS comes, they can kill themselves and their own children rather than face what would happen at the hands of ISIS. They spoke of embassies closing their doors. But the mother who was there spoke passionately about her faith. The only hope, she said, we have is in Jesus. And we teach our children that if ISIS comes, our children must be ready to tell them that Jesus loves you. And they say to them, maybe you will see blood, but you will be with the Lord. <coughs> she told us her blood is shouting from the land and begged us to fast and to pray for them and with them. Canon Andrew White's organization, FFRME, is working tirelessly to help. And again, there's information on the bulletin board. A recently produced video um, from his organization showed one woman, her husband had been kidnapped and she had had to flee with both children, nothing but the clothes on their back. She spoke of feeling so helpless that she wanted to die. Her faith was, it seemed that it was waning. And then one day, one Sunday, someone invited her to come with her to church. And there she experienced again the love of Jesus, was touched by the Holy Spirit was reminded of the hope that we all have in Christ. You saw the joy on her face, even in the midst of terrible circumstances. It is a hope that we all have as Christians. It is the hope and joy that we saw, seen, well, that we saw on our television screens this week. What a wonderful example of Christianity. So much to celebrate. People's hands raised in prayer, voices raised in song. And we can join with them, crying out to God, praying for the prayer of the righteous person is powerful and effective. And we can write to our leaders, and we can support the people, uh, Andrew White and the people that he serves, so that we all may be free and joyful. I was struck by the words of the, the hymn that we, we sang that Jesse chose. If thou but trust in God to guide thee and hope in him through all thy ways, he'll give thee strength whate'er beside thee and bear thee through the evil days. Who trusts in God and changing, love builds on a rock that nought can move. Amen.